So we can proceed. We, we have looked at uh, different methods through which uh, online publishers can generate uh, revenue and different factors that can determine the amount of revenue that can be generated through different methods. So in order to make sense of all these things that we have been discussing uh, for the last 45 minutes, I will go through some examples where we will calculate uh, uh, some uh, actual cases. So imagine that you have uh, a site where you provide advertising space. And this is the scenario that you have. Your site has monthly site visit of uh, 100,000. And 0.5% of these visitors click through to affiliate sites, where 2% go on to buy business services at an average order value of 500 Norwegian crowns. And assume that your site, in this case, uh, log206.no, receives commission to the tune of 5% of the average order value. So we want to calculate revenue uh, in this case. Uh, one of the, I think, uh, the easiest way we do is to create a sort of uh, a table where we will, you will identify the various uh, variables that are important in this case. So the first one is you have to determine the number of visitors and in this case we know that our site receives 100,000 uh, visitors monthly and also you need to know the click-through rate that out of those 100,000 how many click to the links provided on your site and in this case we are told that uh, the click-through rate is 0.5 percent that out of the all the visitors that come to your site, 0.5% click through to the 30-part uh, site. And also you need to calculate uh, the number of uh, affiliate site visits. And this, this number comes from this, that we know we have 100,000 visitors. And out of this 0.5% click through to the 30-part uh, uh, site, this translates into 500 uh, visitors that eventually are transferred to the to the third part site. So the, the calculation is uh, pretty easy. It's, uh, you multiply 100,000 times 0.5%. Uh, percent. And then you need to know the conversion rate. The conversion rate that is people that eventually buy from the third part site. So we are told that 2% uh, eventually go on to buy business services at an average order value of this. So is 2% uh, of the 500 visitors that uh, eventually landed on the third part uh, site. And that makes it 10 visitors that actually buy from that site. We know the average order value is uh, 500 Norwegian crowns that uh, those 10 people on average will buy uh, services uh, to the tune of 500 uh, Norwegian crowns. This makes a total sale of 5,000. Uh, Norwegian crown. So it's 500 multiplied by 10 customers. If our site receives commission at 5% uh, uh, the, as, as the fee, as the commission, sorry, which means out of these visitors, you will be able to make 250 Norwegian uh, Crowns. So the computation is uh, quite intu intuitive, I, I, I would say. But what if you have another scenario where you have monthly page views of a million, and on average you have three ads uh, per page displayed for different advertisers, and your charge is 15 Norwegian crowns, cost per thousand. Assume all that inventory is sold, but, but this assumption is uh, quite unlikely because in, in, in the real world, it's uh, difficult to sell all the advertising space. 
So we can use the same approach, creating a table where we identify the various variables that are crucial for this uh, computation. So first, we, we have to identify the number of monthly page views. And this is because the method of revenue calculation is the click per thousand. The number of, is, it depends on the number of uh, views. So we need to, to determine the monthly page views. And in this case, it's uh, a million views. And then we have to determine the number of ad units uh, that we have on the page. In this case, we have three ads. We sell all the, we assume that all the pages uh, are sold, which means the total ads saved, that the total views that are, are created in this website is 3 million. And this comes from 1,000 views, and you have three ads. So each of these ads receive uh, a million views, and this makes a total of 3 uh, million views. Cost per 1,000, uh, maybe we need to make some uh, calculation. So we have in total 3,000, uh, uh, 3 million views that come from a, thousand, um, a, a million views times the three ads. And the payment is made by um, So in this case, we have cost per thousand as 15 Norwegian crowns, and we have 3 uh, million views, which means we will divide the 3 million per a thousand to get the number of a thousand blocks that can be created out of these 3 million uh, views, and we multiply it by 15, because the agreement is for every uh, a thousand views, your site will receive 15 Norwegian crowns. So it's total views divided by a thousand to get the number of a thousand blocks multiplied by the fee agreement. But also, we could have uh, a slight uh, different uh, scenario where the campaign with a uh, cost per click pricing was displayed 2 million times in a period of one day, in that same day. The ad server counted 5,000 clicks on the banners of the campaign. The CPC rate, uh, cost per click rate for the campaign was said to be 4 Norwegian crowns. Calculate the effective, uh, effective cost per thousand, that is eCPA of this campaign with a CPC rate. I'll talk a little bit about uh, what the effective uh, cost per 1,000 means. This is actually a method of uh, assessing uh, the performance of your, page, of your page or the effectiveness of your page. And what this uh, means is determining the amount of revenue that you would make if, the, uh, the, if you would have 1,000 views. So in this case, the revenue is determined through uh, cost per, per click, but we want to determine how much would we make in case we would go for CPM model. And we can use the same approach. So the total revenue uh, based on the uh, cost per, per click is 20 thousand Norwegian uh, crowns, and this is based on the uh, number of clicks multiplied by rate per click. So we received 5,000 clicks, and we charge four Norwegian crowns for per each click, making a total revenue of 20,000 Norwegian crowns. But our 
our intention is to calculate cost per 1,000. So we need to determine the number of impressions or the number of views that we, we receive. And this is given in, uh, in the information that we received 2 million views. Now, effective cost per, per 1,000 is given by the formula that total earnings divide by total impressions my, uh, times 1,000. That so the amount of revenue that you have generated through other means, and in this case, uh, CPC, divide by the total impressions that you received times 1,000, that gives you the effective cost per 1,000. Per, per that how much it would generate if you had to compute that per 1,000 per or per number of Im impressions. So we were able to generate 20,000 Norwegian crowns from the first column, and this is divided by the total impressions, and that is 2 million given him in the case, and we multiply it by 1,000, giving an uh, effective uh, cost per thousand of 10 Norwegian crowns. This, uh, this approach is uh, very useful in weighing the relative importance of different methods that you, you can use. So in this case, uh, the method that we used was uh, CPC, and we wanted to see how much, uh, how we would perform, how we would fare if uh, we would use uh, a different approach. Uh, in the book, actually the, the guys that have written the book uh, have a, a template where they provide all these uh, formulas. So if you have a, a, a business and you would like to make these calculations, all that you need is to plug in the, the numbers. So if you, you know like how many people uh, visit your sites, uh, how many clicks they make, and these are, uh, all these are data that you, you can generate. So with the template they provide, you just need to, uh, to plug in the figures and you, you, you get the numbers. But uh, I just wanted to show you like how you obtain each of the, the, the figures. I'll also talk a little bit about uh, online startup companies. And si since this is uh, the core of your uh, assignments, so probably we need to say a few things uh, about this. In fact, starting businesses these days has bec appears to be quite easy, especially uh, with the invention of the uh, internet and other digital technologies. In some cases, uh, the cost of starting a, a business could be virtually zero. And this uh, has, has resulted uh, into the fact that every day thousands if not millions of businesses are created. However, there is a sad story about, about uh, online startups. According to many sources, more than 90% of uh, these online startups end up in failure within the first 120 days. So most of them die as fast as they, they were created. So it's very easy to, to create uh, a business using uh, online platforms and the, the various opportunities that the internet has created, but also the success uh, rate of online businesses is very low. If 90% of uh, businesses uh, die, it means out of 10 businesses, only one of them succeed. However, as the data uh, speak uh, for themselves, 90% uh, fail, but also we have 10% that succeed, which means there are some success stories that we can learn from, as well as lessons from these failures. So th these are some of the quotes uh, from startups that, uh, start online startup businesses that have failed or that have died. And uh, one of them says, uh, we made deadly cultural and strategic mistakes. So they are trying to highlight the importance of cultural and strategic uh, dimensions. And this is partly what this course will address in, in, uh, in the coming lectures, where we will focus on the business strategy and how you should uh, 
create a successful uh, business strategy. So these guys say the cultural and strategic mistakes were core to their failures. Another firm uh, that uh, failed says uh, we delivered on technology, but we sorely lacked in maturity of management skills. So they, they were superior on the technological aspects, and they had weaknesses on the management uh, aspects. And this uh, tells you the importance of having uh, uh, well-rounded skills that are trying to balance different aspects of a business in order to succeed. So it's so uh, focus on one specific aspect uh, well, might, might not be a very good idea for your online startup. You need to have a kind of focus on each and every aspect that is important to your business. And this guy said, we made the mistake of focusing on engineering first and customer development second. So as we said earlier, uh, customers provide a reason for uh, your business to, 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 to survive. If people don't buy your goods or services, uh, obviously you will not be able to sustain your business. So you need to have uh, a specific focus on your customers as well as uh, the technological aspects of your business. Our idea wasn't bad. We were just too slow and focused on the wrong things. No one was working full time. We lacked marketing skills. We had too much PR, too much money, and no customer relationships. As the product became more and more complex, the performance degraded. And we, we will talk about this uh, w when we discuss the Facebook ca case study, the importance of scalability. Because sometimes we, you begin with a business that you might think, you may not imagine how uh, demanding it might be as the business grows. So you need to have what they call scalability. So yes? What's the uh, Public uh, relationships. Yeah. So it's uh, pretty much about a uh, publicity, a relationship with the media, and, and so on. And then, oh, so we were talking w w with the last one, uh, which, uh, the scalability, the ability of the uh, business to uh, expand or to accommodate growth. Uh, business Insider have uh, done a very good uh, research where they interviewed 33 startups that uh, have failed. And they share their story, that uh, what they think uh, went wrong with their initiative. So I would recommend you, if you are interested in uh, starting on your own business, this is one of the uh, articles that you should read. That, uh, of course, it focuses on the what went wrong. So the kind of pit pitfalls that uh, you can avoid uh, as you pursue your entrepreneurial uh, ambition. As I said earlier, there are a number of success stories that we can draw some lessons. And based on these uh, business stories, there are six factors that are, are said to be important when it comes to assessing you, the potential uh, viability of your business or potential success of your business. And I will go through quickly each one of these. So the first one is the, the concept itself. And this describes the strengths of the business uh, model. So it pretty much uh, describes the, the potential to generate revenue, in, including the size of the, 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 the market targeted, superior customer value, first move advantage. So this is what I wanted you, uh, I wanted you to do in your first assignment, that the idea itself. What value are you going to create uh, to, to your customers? And why should they buy from you? So this forms the core uh, uh, of the uh, potential for your uh, business to succeed, the business uh, uh, concept itself. And then the second aspect is innovation. To what extent your idea is novel? You might start a business that probably there are a thousand people out there that are doing the same thing. And this will compromise the chances for your success. So you need to think about how novel, how new your business idea is. And when it comes to innovation, it doesn't necessarily need to be something that has never existed anywhere. It could be uh, 
a service or a product that existed in a different industry and you introduce it into a different uh, say in a different market and you introduce it uh, to, to a different market where it never existed before it could be a method that was used for uh, in a different industry and you use it in a uh, different one so it, it could be something that is completely novel that it has never existed or it has existed but in a different form and you are trying to modify it and present it in a different way so as they say imitation is not necessarily a problem if it's applied to different markets or audience i'll, I'll show you uh, an, an example of um, product that i think is pretty cool This is a company based in Finland. It's uh, called uh, Repack. Uh, I think it was initiated in 2010. And what these guys uh, realized was that due to the proliferation of uh, online retailing, a thousand and millions of uh, disposable packages are sent every day to, to consumers. And all these are, have implication to the sustainability of our environment. So they came up with an idea of cre creating packages that could be uh, reused. So what you do is uh, an, an online retailer sign up to their service and when you buy things from uh, an online retailer, say Amazon or any other onli online retailer, you can choose whether you want your parcel to be delivered through repack uh, packages or a normal package. If you choose to, their uh, package, all that you have to do when you receive uh, the package is to flatten it and send it back for free. And each time you do that, the the retailer uh, will award you with some points, uh, I mean credit, which you can later use to buy uh, things from that uh, uh, retailer. So it started in Finland and it, it works uh, pretty well and now they are considering expanding to other countries but if you read their stories uh, very interesting if you go at the bottom of the page they talk about how they came up with this uh, idea so these guys were logistic consultants in in Finland and they were they had an assignment with the uh, uh, Finnish uh, postal corporation and while doing that assignment one of the guys there are three uh, guys and one of them had an idea because when you are at the postal office the, you can see uh, amount of these all these packages that are moving and then you say but w what if we do what the beverage bottles are doing that re the recycling of the bottles this is something that we have been doing for uh, for many years in history they say what if we create something that could be reusable and from that point they started working on the idea so what i wanted to say is uh you, you, the idea does not necessarily have to be something that has never existed anywhere else, but you can just transfer it from one uh, uh, market or one industry into a different one, and should it, it can work uh, pretty well. And then uh, another factor is uh, execution, but. Uh, you can have a very good business uh, uh, idea, but if you are not able to implement it, then it may not be as successful as it should. So you need to think about an idea that you can implement. And then traffic, and this is mostly for an online business, that you, traffic, as we said earlier, is a, a quite important determinant when it comes to success of on, on, online uh, sites. Uh, so you need to think of no ways uh, you can uh, attract uh, traffic to your to, to your uh, site and to most uh, of these online uh, businesses they have what we call uh, the critical mass that uh, uh, a certain number of subscribers that you need to attain in order to start making uh, profit so companies like uh, Facebook in, in order to uh, to make money they need to have a uh, huge volume uh, of subscribers because with that it means they have many eyes that to which they can exp uh, expose ads 
And this is attractive to the advertisers, that the more people you have, the more attractive you appear to the advertisers. And then uh, another factor is uh, financing. As we talked earlier in the business model, that uh, you, mm -hmm. will have, you will incur some costs in order uh, to get your business off the ground. You need to incur costs. You will incur costs for the resources, for the activities. So you need to think about sources of um, uh, finance. And this could be private uh, uh, sources such as uh, venture capitalists, or it could be uh, public uh, uh, sources. So, for instance, uh, in Norway, uh, the Ministry for Trade and Industry have uh, a, 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 a strategy for small and uh, medium-sized uh, enterprises. And they provide a lot of uh, details, but one of these is the uh, sources of finance, that uh, people that are interested in starting business, they can uh, 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 obtain. So if you go to page 46 of this uh, document, they identify various sources of uh, capital that you can approach for starting a business. And I believe in many countries, uh, governments are showing specific uh, priority or interest in uh, small and medium enterprises and they provide uh, such uh, sources of capital. And the last one is the, the profile and this has to do with the publicity of your uh, business, how the business will be perceived in the, in, in the public because uh, the, the community around you is one of the stakeholders, as we saw it uh, in the first uh, lecture, that are, have an impact on, on the success of your business. So you need to consider how your business will be uh, perceived. So that's it. And uh, I thought we could go through Facebook uh, case study. Have you read the case? Yep. So Facebook is a company that really doesn't need introduction. We, we uh, probably whatever introduction that I will make about this company will be very unfair to, fa to Facebook. Well, you probably know much more than what uh, I, would, uh, I would say. It's, uh, it's a company that probably each one of us, uh, or if not most of us, are using its services. So we will use it because First, because of the uh, familiarity of the company, and I thought uh, as the first case study, probably it would be uh, a good idea to start with a company that is uh, well uh, uh, known to each one of us. So the approach that I would use to, 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 to go through this case is to go through the different aspects of uh, the business model that uh, we have uh, gone through. So we will. Uh, analyze uh, Facebook or in that uh, perspective. So I will display questions and we will discuss together. So the, the, the first question uh, is, uh, what is Facebook uh, value proposition? And this is the, the key aspect as we identify in the business model that uh, you need to know what value do you offer to your consumer. So if you think of Facebook, which value do your proposition uh, do they present to, the co to their customers? Anyone with a suggestion? Communication and sharing. Uh, so communication and sharing. Yeah, that's right. How? C can you explain a little bit on, on that? You can communicate with your family or friends or work relationship and you can share files or information or things with other people in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Someone else with a different uh, opinion? Do we all agree with that? I think it's true. And, uh, the, all this can be uh, pretty much ca ca captured in Facebook uh, 
mission, a uh, statement of their mission. And they say uh, their mission is simply to make the world more open and connected. So this is, uh, I would say, a summary of all everything that you have said that, uh, to get to allow people to, to, to communicate, uh, to, to share uh, information. So what they do is to provide uh, a platform that allows people to do mm -hmm. this, as uh, she has uh, pointed out. But so th this is the, the, the value uh, proposition. Then we need to think about who are their uh, customers, in the sense that whom are they saving? Which customer segments does Facebook save? Yeah, everyone. Mm -hmm. And does it have any implication to their business? What What does it mean that when you have a platform that everyone can join? You have to be flexible. How? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, uh, that, yes, uh, that's a very good idea. That uh, they are saving a mass market in a way, so you need to cut off all these different uh, groups of uh, customers. That's right. But which other segment do they uh, serve? Companies. Companies. And uh, and how do they save these companies? Yeah, uh, through ads, and also, sorry, they can have their own pages and providing them with the opportunity to interact with uh, consumers. So these are benefits that uh, uh, companies can, can, can obtain. So. The core benefits uh, to consumers as what you, you have uh, uh, said, uh, the possibility to share, to communicate, to make new friends, uh, uh, of course, to express yourself. Uh, we see people updating their status and to let others know what you are, uh, you are up for. And also companies, they have an uh, opportunity to, to advertise, to create their profile and get opportunity to engage uh, with their audiences. So these are the kind of benefits that attract uh, their consumers to the site. And what do you think is uh, Facebook revenue model? Or put it in, in other words, how does Facebook make money? We've said this is available for everyone and it's free of charge to join. Now, how do they generate uh, revenue? They make it through ads so the revenue is uh, ad, ad based you think there is any other source of uh, revenue that uh, they use how mm-hmm What else? They adapt the ads so that the people don't get the same ads with multiple ads. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, basically, we would say the main source of revenue is uh, the ads, and they do it uh, in different ways. Like uh, they have, uh, uh, what we've seen um, uh, in a couple of slides, uh, the different strategies that they do use to sustain this revenue model. But the, the main source of uh, their revenue is advertisement, at least uh, based on the case. So how does Facebook balance use experience and advertising? We, 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 we saw earlier today that one of the factors that you need to consider when you place ads on your site is 
to balance use experience and the number of ads that you place on your 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 site so based on this case uh, how does facebook uh, balance user experience and advertising So you suggest that they, can you say it once again? Uh-huh, yeah. Another possibility, uh, the approach to balancing user experience and advertising. Exactly, that they try to balance uh, the. To, to, they try to make the ads as relevant as possible to the users. So over time, they, they try to learn our behavior. They try to consider uh, the kind of things we, we like based on our previous activities and present to us uh, relevant uh, ads that are relevant uh, to, to, to us. And what else? What about the number of ads on their site? Is it too crowded? Do they have ads everywhere? No, it hasn't changed the amount of ads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, as we saw it earlier, that, uh, that the number of ads they can determine the user experience. And Facebook is very careful on that, that they make sure that uh, the, the page is not cluttered, is not crowded with ads, so they're trying to create a, uh, a balance between um, the number of ads they display to the, uh, to, to, to the customers and the, the user experience, that they give you opportunity also to enjoy your experience on, on, on Facebook. So I think th th those are the, the factors that uh, they try to consider uh, providing ads that are relevant to the users, trying to strike the right balance between the number of ads and the user experience. Uh, is there anything else we can? Uh, yeah, that's it. And what about uh, user information? D do they sell any user information? Yeah, at least uh, they don't do that. And in the case, uh, they say so. So what is their key strategy? What kind of strategic activities are they doing to make sure that they sustain their business? So So and, and that will be on technology that from time to time they continue to advance their technology to create uh, apps and solutions that will enhance uh, user experience. And what else? Mm -hmm. Which is more, um, become more dependent on Facebook and what your friends, what mm -hmm. they have and what you do, so as to keep up with friends. Mm -hmm. So generally we say they try to uh, enhance the user experience by expanding the, the different activities that you can uh, uh, perform once you are on their site.
improvement. And what else do you think uh, that, that Facebook does to sustain their business? Connecting the world. Connecting the world. Uh, and how do they do that? Expanding to mm -hmm. country to country. Uh, have you guys heard about the, the organization called internet.org? Uh, th this is an uh, uh, initiative to, to, to connect the, the, the world with the internet. I don't know if we can do it um, pretty fast. Uh, internet. Uh, You know, so th this is an initiative, uh, and Facebook is uh, behind it. That uh, what they are doing is to mm. try to expand uh, internet pe penetration. So it's uh, only out of uh, one, uh, uh, only one out of every three people can go online. Why aren't more people connected? So uh, Facebook e and other technology companies are now making a move to, to make sure that as many people as possible are connected. And what do you think, why do they do this? Of course, we all know that uh, uh, it's something cool, that getting as more people connected it, it is a great idea. But do you think this has any implication to their business? Exactly. So as, as you say, they are, uh, they, are, they are making efforts to make sure that they get as many people as possible on the on the internet. So like any other uh, business, Facebook also is, has some competitors. And these could be international competitors or local competitors. Uh, who are those competitors? Yes, Google Plus is uh, one of the competitors. And do you think Google Plus is uh, the biggest threat that uh, Facebook is facing today? Twitter. Twitter. Why? Uh, Google Plus is more similar to Facebook than Facebook. You don't get that much benefit of changing from Facebook to Google Plus. Of course, people have Facebook. But Twitter is more different, but it will, they will more take over. Mm -hmm. Do you know which operating system is used by the majority of uh, mobile devices today. Android, right? And who provides Android? Do you know some of the terms that uh, mobile uh, phone producers or mobile device producers that want to use uh, Android have to adhere to? One of them is that you, there are some specific apps that they have to come with, the, uh, with your device, that they are pre-installed. Which means most of us are made to be Google Plus users even with uh, out of our will. So today, Google Plus is going uh, pretty fast. But as you say, still, uh, Facebook is uh, popular. And what they're providing is uh, much more, uh, more or less the same as uh, Google Plus. But I think they are so much scared of this is because the age Google Plus has, because people are not forced, but uh, are compelled to have it. As long as you have a device that uh, has Android, you are in a way forced to be part of it. We, we saw in, like, in the previous lectures where that still they don't have many active users, but uh, the number is growing. A a any other uh, competitors, local competitors? D do you consider any? Uh, site or service provider in Norway that would pose threat to Facebook? And in some countries uh, like uh, Russia, they have uh, a social network si site called VK. And in Japan, they, they, they have uh, a site. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Max or something. So in many countries, uh, there are s some uh, social networking sites that are also 
developing. And in a way, they pose uh, some threat. Of course, Facebook is still quite powerful, but these are competitors that they need to watch from time to time. They need to, to, to monitor. Which financial and customer related metrics would you consider important for social network uh, sites like Facebook? So if you, you add a social network site, which cu customer dimensions or which customer metrics and financial metrics would you consider as uh, important for, your, for sustaining your business? Anyone with suggestion? Let's start with customer metrics. Mm -hmm. Would you consider the number of users as uh, one of the factors, success factors? How, why? Mm -hmm. And, and these, are, these factors are very much related to the factors that we have uh, uh, discussed uh, earlier before. Number of users, mm -hmm. the amount of time they, they spend on the, uh, on the page, the proportion of ad inventory, like the space you have for advertising. This will be related to the, to the fi financial uh, 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 metrics of the site, but also the operational cost. Because we know that profit is a function of revenue and cost, which means you cannot talk about financial sustainability of your, your site unless you, you consider, uh, without considering the cost and the revenue. So most of the customer related me metrics have to do with the revenue because all these factors like number. Uh, of uh, visitors you have, the, the amount of time they spend de determine the revenue. But also you need to think about the, the cost. How much does it cost to, to provide this uh, service? Would you consider, uh, what, what would you consider as the main business risk that Facebook is facing today? Privacy, Privacy yeah. So privacy concerns, I think, is uh, uh, the main uh, risk. And of course, uh, from the case study, they also admit uh, themselves that this is uh, the biggest issue that uh, uh, they need to deal with. Most people are very much uh, concerned about their privacy, and uh, Facebook has to, from time to time, work on this to address these uh, concerns. If you are part of Facebook, or if you hired a consultant to, uh, to, to Facebook, which approach would you, or approaches would you suggest that uh, Facebook would uh, minimize this risk? In this case, we are, we are talking about uh, privacy, but, uh, but, but also uh, other risks are, uh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm. They also mentioned that threat of uh, new entrants as one of the, the risk, potential technical problems, and the ad revenue sometimes uh, declines because you have all these uh, alternative uh, uh, advertising spaces that are available today. But the main uh, uh, concern is privacy. So I, I would like for this last question, just focus on the privacy. So what would you suggest to to Facebook to, to, to reduce this uh, uh, private uh, users' co privacy concern. They have done a lot by making it even choose to make a 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. So it's true that they, they have done quite a lot to do this, but uh, they still have, a, and as you said, it's a big challenge to protect information on, uh, uh, online because you have hackers out there that uh, every day are working on to find out how they can crack uh, this information. But also, they need to, uh, I would say, give a sort of uh, guarantee, uh, explain to their users, especially when they introduce uh, new services that they need to provide a uh, explanation on uh, why the, the, the why the the services are valuable and sometimes when they request for certain information they need to clarify how are they going to to mm -hmm. use the the information now all these questions that we have uh, uh, addressed for Facebook would apply could also apply to your to your business that these are kind of things that you you need to consider when you have an online-based business because uh, the issue of privacy is not only uh, Facebook or any other social um, uh, networking site, but also it applies to many other businesses, even for uh, re uh, electronic uh, uh, retailers where we buy things. We, we always uh, have some privacy uh, concerns uh, regarding the information that we provide to, to these retailers. So as uh, a business manager, you need to think about how you uh, can protect people's uh, uh, information at all, uh, how you can explain to your consumers in a convincing way that their data is safe. And with that, uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry for taking you five minutes. So I will, I will see you next Tuesday.